Tamisha Bada here, Houston-based attorney and host of Ask Tammy Live, where we discuss the best ways to establish your business, protect your brands, and keep your profits. Today's question of the day is, what is an office action? I kind of like this question because I think it's so important. So <laughs> let's dive in. Um, all right. So an office action is the term that is given to the initial denial that people often receive from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. I said a whole lot of words there. Essentially, people submit their applications, their applications go to an examining attorney, and if everything is not perfect, they send it back to them and they say, here, we're not going to allow you go forward. Um, we're not going to allow you to go forward with your application because we see this issue, this issue, this issue, this issue. And it's issued from an examining attorney. And I think that's important to point out because you're not dealing with just the, you know, some layman. You're dealing with somebody who is analyzing the law and looking at the legal standard of review and measuring your application. And so when it comes to office actions, there are some that are simple. Those are usually called non-substantive office actions. And then there are some that are more complicated, which are called your substantive act office actions. And there really runs the gauntlet, but you can receive any one of these. Um, some of your more common types of office actions are if you're marked, so that means your name, your logo, your slogan, whatever it is that you're trying to trademark is identical or too similar to an existing mark on the registry. I want to underline, highlight, asterisk, um, the too similar part. Because so often I have people who come to the office or who send me messages or who have conversations with me and they're like, well, my mark is different. Like hers was, you know, stars with a Z and mine's was stars with two Z's. It's different, right? Standard of review is likelihood of confusion. If it is confusing, if it's too similar, they're going to say no. And that's a pretty bad example that I gave because... It's not as simple as that. Like even that is almost identical. I'm saying if you have um, a mark, oh, I'm trying to think of a good example of, of where we've seen it. Because I've had folks that they've had two different words, but they said that the words look pretty similar, right? But the words are not exactly the same. And I've seen some of these where there'll be an office action that they say it's too similar, right? Um, if you get an office action like that about it being too similar, it's usually called a 2D office action. And that would be considered a more complicated one because you may have to go back and review the legal standards as to how, uh, the law determines whether something is too similar or not. And there are lots of nuances. Sometimes they look at the sound. Sometimes they look at the length of letters. Sometimes they look at the different, um, streams of commerce that the goods are going to be in. So is this commerce, or is this, this item going to be sold in this market or in that market? Are those markets related? Could those markets potentially cross over, right? Um, those are some of the questions that they're asking and could result in, again, an office action for something being too similar. Another type of office action you could get is if your mark is too basic. Yeah, if it's basic. But they won't call it basic. They're not going to send you an office action that says you are basic. <laughs> no, um, they'll say it's too descriptive. And what does that mean? Well, office, at, um, this, when it comes to trademarks, there is more legal protection given to things that are unique, um, that are really identifiers. But if you're using something to just describe something, that's not unique. You're just describing what you have. So for example, I couldn't register a trademark that said uh, Black Mike for the, uh, a series of different microphones that are black because all I'm doing is I'm describing the mic. That's not unique. That's not an identifier, right? So I could, if I tried to submit an application, I would likely get an office action that says I am too descriptive. It's not something that actually identifies or distinguishes my goods or services in the marketplace. Now, if you chose to use the term black microphone to describe something else that was completely arbitrary, it's completely unrelated, right? Um, then that like maybe you use black microphone and that was for speaking and coaching service, right? I'm not saying that this is possible. I've not tried to trademark this, but if you did something along those lines, right, there might be some protection for you there. 
Now they're related, right? But it's not merely a description of what it is that you're trying to distinguish yourself in commerce for, right? You're not merely describing the speaking services that you have. So there's a chance that they would say, okay, we see how you did that. So that's why you have things like Jaguar, the car, right? It's, you can see why they had the Jaguar because Jaguars are fast, but it's not describing the car. It's not saying fast car, it's saying Jaguar. It's a simile of sorts or a metaphor because we're not using like our ass. It's a, and, and those are allowed, right? Those are allowed. So, um, but you could get an office action if you're too basic slash descriptive. Um, you could also get an office action if you don't provide the right specimen. If you're wondering what a trademark specimen is and you're like, Ooh, what is that? I have a video on that. So I'll put a link to that, but it's an example of you using the mark with the goods that you said that you are going to use it with. So if you don't send the right type of specimen, you can get an office action for that. Um, and then finally, there are sometimes office actions that are related to the categories of goods that, which are called classes that you're registering your mark in. So let's say, there's a portion of the application that asks you to describe all the goods and services that you're trying to provide. And let's say your goods actually fall into two categories, but you've only submitted an application for one. They're going to send you an office action that says, do you want to also submit additional funds to um, get your uh, trademark registered in this category of goods as well? Because you mentioned it here. Um, if you don't, they'll say strike it from your description here. We're not going to offer you protection for that category if you're not willing to pay for that category. Um, and so that's what you'll see with the most common office actions. There are a few other ones that I haven't um, described because you don't see those too often. Some of them are simple, some of them are complex, but that's kind of what you see. Now, how do you respond to an office action? Um, well, they're usually going to tell you exactly what you need to do in order to respond. So they'll tell you, you need to submit a new specimen, or they'll say you need to clarify your, um, goods and services. Uh, they'll let you know for the most part, what it is that you need to do. You can reach out to the examining attorney if it's something small and usually email them directly or you can follow the procedure that they've laid out with their portal. So they might ask you to fill out something and submit it that way. Um, sometimes you'll also see, depending again on how complicated or complex the office action is, you might also find that uh, sending in an accompanying brief is valuable. So I've had clients who have come to me, they've tried to do a trademark on their own and they've run into issues. And then we'll have to put a brief together, a legal brief, where we break down the legal arguments as to why their mark should be allowed to be registered. Right. So that's typically how we respond. Um, you usually get, they just change the time three months to respond to office actions. So you have time to kind of do the research if necessary, gather your resources and get everything together to submit to them. Now let's say you submit your response for the office action and it is denied. What do you do? Well, that basically means that they are not going to allow you to register your trademark on the main registry. There is an appeal process that you can kind of look like, but for the most part, they're saying no. So if you're not able to register on the primary, you might also be able to register on the secondary trademark app, um, registry. It doesn't provide as much exclusivity and protection as the first one, but it is an option for people who are still trying to make sure they register their trademarks. So your generic or not generic, but your descriptive, so what was deemed too descriptive might have a place on the secondary, uh, registry. It really just depends. So, um, and also you should know that they're not going to refund your money if they deny your application, if they reject it and they say, Oh no, you're not going to, we're not going to register your trademark. They're not going to pay you back. So I think that's important to know. Um, and that's part of the reason why we ask people to, and we, in our firm, uh, make sure that we do an initial search before we submit your application. We do that so that we understand the legal landscape that we're navigating and can tell you, Hey, uh, based off of what we saw, your likelihood and chances of success are low. Let's re-strategize so that you're not wasting your money. Okay. So that's how we navigate that. Now I know that this was a lot, but I hope that you found this to be really valuable, particularly if you're in the process of trying to navigate an office action. Um, and you came across and you're like, Oh, what do I do? I don't want you to panic. I want you to, you know, you're doing your research, which is good. I want you to get with a legal professional. I want you to ask them questions, go in for a consultation and see if you can allow them to do that work for you. Just because it might involve a lot of legal research and time to craft an argument that allows your, um, application to make it through. So 
That's all I have for you today. Uh, I want to let you know about an amazing resource that we've created just for you. It is the Level Up Your Business and Brand Action Checklist. If you are interested in discovering the step-by-step things I ask my clients to do to help them establish their businesses, protect their brands, and keep their profits, that checklist is for you. So download that. The link will be in the description below. Finally, if you want to follow me, the handle is TOS Legal, and that's also the website. You can log on to the website to schedule an appointment with me and my team to learn more, to access our resources, to see our videos. All of those things are available to you via www.toslegal.com. And triple finally, let me know what you want me to talk about in some of these other videos. And you don't have to limit it to just LLCs and trademarks, although I will talk about LLCs and trademarks if you ask me about them. Um, But feel free to ask me about leadership. Feel free to ask me about marketing. Feel free to ask me about business strategy um, and anything else. And we'll see where this conversation goes. We might have a couple of lives coming up soon as well. Uh, It's been great speaking with you today. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day and I will catch you on the flip side. Take it easy. Bye.